Bill, welcome to the show, man. Great to see you. How are you, sir? Doing very well. How are you? Man, playoff playoff football is here in, in the college world, and I'm ready for it. And we're going to dive into the games. We'll talk about Ryan Day and, and the future and everything. But really, I want to I'm going to focus on the matchup between Georgia and Ohio State because l- let's be very clear. Like for most of the the, the, the season, even maybe the preseason, the thing we all kind of wanted to see was Ohio State's offense and Georgia's defense. It, it's not mm-hmm. showing up in exactly the way we thought, but it is still here. Do you think Ohio State's talent is? Are they the only team in America from a talent perspective that can match up with Georgia's defense player for player? Yeah, probably. I mean, if you look at the recruiting rankings that you you throw Alabama in there too, but but Ohio State has better receivers than Alabama and and it's probably uh, while while different at quarterback, I would say probably just as good or close to as good as Alabama at quarterback. So, if you were if you were to design a team that you think to yourself like, okay, how do we beat Georgia? And it's not to say that Ohio State is guaranteed to beat Georgia, but I think it would look a lot like what Ohio State does well. Um, that the teams that I think have found success against Georgia this year, the the, the few that have, and and the the little bit that it has happened, um, have been teams that can throw the ball um, in a dynamic and explosive way. And and that is what Ohio State does. It's what Ohio State has done really uh, ever since Ryan Day has taken over as head coach. Well, so that brings brings two questions up. One is how healthy are all the pieces around CJ Stroud? Because that was sort of an on off issue that they dealt with throughout the course of the season. So I'll let you answer that one first. But the follow up is then, of course, w- what are the things that slowed them down, whether it's Notre Dame, whether it's the weather against no- Northwestern, whether it was Iowa? I mean, certainly Michigan, how the game played out was a part of that game control. So start with health and then what worked against them this season? Yeah, from a health standpoint, I think they're they're pretty good. Obviously, they don't have Jackson Smith and Jigba, but they have not had him for the entire year, which I think might explain the the latter part that we'll get to in, in a second. But but the guys that they've had for most the the majority of the season, Marvin Harrison Jr. He's fine. Emeka Ibuka, I think was was dealing with um, some like bumps and bruises here or there that might have hindered him at times throughout the year, but I think he's feeling healthy. Um, the offensive line should be in, in decent shape. There's there's one questionable guy there, the right guard, Matthew Jones, who got hurt against Maryland, um, did not play against Michigan, but it sounds like he's been practicing and should be good to go uh, against Georgia. Um, tight ends are healthy. Uh, running back will be missing Travion Henderson, but as long as they have Mayan Williams available, and, and they should, um, I think they'll be okay there. And, and obviously, C.J. Stroud has, has been fine from a health standpoint for for the majority of the season. So um, it'll be – it's not it's not the Ohio State offense, I think, that everyone envisioned coming into this year because Jackson was such a big part of that. Um, but it is, by and large, the offense that Ohio State has had for this entire season, which is to say still a pretty good one. Now, what, what got them in trouble at times this year? I, I think there were – you know, if you look at the Notre Dame game, they they came into that game with a bunch of stuff for Jackson and lost him almost immediately and yeah. kind of had to find their way through the wilderness without him in that game. Ended up not scoring a whole whole lot of points and and, and still won. But what I think might have what have would have happened, what might have happened for the offense, excuse me, is that it was never really clear on what Jackson's injury was or how long it might last. He tried to come back a couple of times and never really worked out. But I think there was always this idea of like, okay, let's just get to when Jackson is healthy and we'll be back to ourselves. And I think that might have held the offense back just a little bit, not, not a ton. I mean, they, you know, they, they knew there were going to be weeks in there where they weren't going to have him, but I think there was always this eye on the future. where like, okay, once we get him back, we're going to be ourselves. And that never really came to fruition for the offense. And therefore I, I don't know if they ever truly, deviated from what they had hoped to be coming into the season and were just trying to kind of patch things together a little bit along the way with hopes that they would get him back. So so that was a big part of it. Um, running back health was a part of it. Uh, Mayan Williams missed a handful of games. Travion Henderson missed a handful of games. Um, the offensive line was was pretty consistent, but if you include Jackson and you include the running backs, there were there were injuries at key positions that I think just never really allowed the offense to be whole or, or at least um, – move on from it in a way where they could kind of tailor the plan around who they actually did have available. Um, and and that got them in, into some binds sometimes, but then, you know, they just also just didn't play very well against Michigan. Like they just didn't, they just didn't execute right. in that game that the plan was, was probably fine, but they had like too many drops, too many missed assignments. So um, it's, it's been a, a, a mixed bag. I think of things, there's not really one thing that, that has kept Ohio state's offense in check when, when that has happened a little bit that it has. Um, and Brian, Ryan day would probably tell you that, it mostly comes back to them executing and sort of playing their brand of football, which when they're firing on all cylinders is is something to behold. It, it, yeah, yeah no, there's no question, especially if you're going to go man to man, which we know Kirby Smart and Georgia, mm-hmm. they, they like to do. 
Um, is it safe to say, and maybe this is oversimplifying it because it just felt like it was the Notre Dame game maybe, but they, the, if you, if you're dropping a bunch of dudes and you're letting him face a bunch of zone complicated coverages where they're disguising stuff, like as soon as Notre Dame went to man coverage and started blitzing him, that's when he opened up the game in the fourth quarter. Is it, is it that simple that if Georgia, again, Georgia's got three defensive coordinators, basically like, are, are they, and they're all going to be on the field. Is it as simple as winning one-on-one -on -one battles, whether it's, you know, uh, Harrison versus Ringo, whether it's Jalen Carter versus a double team. Like, is it just s as simple as beat your man? Or is there a scheme that you think is really effective at slowing down CJ Stroud? Um, I think what I think CJ is, it, I, I even hesitate to call it a problem because he's so good. But when, when he does encounter issues, it's, it's when teams, I think, do drop into zone kind of cloud that picture for him because he still wants to throw the ball down the field and and I think that the right. one criticism that people have levied against him this year whether that's Ohio State fans or people who talk about him for the for the next level in the NFL draft is there's a little bit of a lack of of playmaking when things start to get out of structure a little bit and and you know I'm actually working on something right now about that and there's plenty of Ohio State fans and, and people who follow them on Twitter who will tweet screenshots every week of look at this eight yard patch of grass that CJ could have ran into yeah. to keep the, the, the drive on schedule. And instead he, he forced the ball into double coverage down the field because he trusts his arm and his receivers that much to try to make those plays. So um, I don't know if it's one scheme per se, but, but I do think CJ and Ryan day at times have a tendency to be a bit impatient and um, we'll we'll try to force the issue and and not necessarily take what defenses are giving them, um, which is oftentimes like that underneath stuff that Ohio State just doesn't have much interest in. So yeah. um, I think they do need to have interest in it in this game. I do think CJ needs to be a little bit more of a playmaker in this game than he has been in the past. But um, yeah, if you're going to line up a man the man coverage, and I know Georgia's DBs are really good. Um, I'll, I'll take Marvin Harrison probably 10 times yeah. out of 10 against anybody in man coverage. And, and Emeka Ibuka is pretty good in his own right. Um, but if you can kind of test CJ's willingness to want to extend plays or or use his feet a little bit to kind of as a weapon, then, then I think you can find some success against Ohio State's offense. W would you would you classify throwing the ball on like third and two inside the 10 yard line against Maryland as a frustrating uh, moment in time for, for Ohio State yeah. fans? <laughs> yeah, that's, the, that's been like one of the common themes this year is not trusting the run game and and listen like there's been points in this year where they've not really done much to to earn that trust the short yardage running in particular has not been very good for Ohio State this year um but I think part of that is it was such a talking point coming out of last year when they lost to Michigan and Michigan like ran the ball down their throats and everyone said Ohio State was soft and and couldn't match a physical team well Ryan Day said well watch us come out and play with three tight ends and we're going to line up and play power football too. And it just doesn't suit their right. personnel. So no. um, I think that the best they've looked running the ball is when they play with three receivers and they spread it out and they do more like shotgun running stuff. And they, they had some success doing that against Michigan. They probably could have stuck with it more than they did, but then that game kind of, kind of got away from them. But uh, yeah, the, the short yardage uh, rushing uh, the, both the execution of it and then, uh, Ryan Day's sort of eroding trust in it when you yeah. think he should use it um, have two, been two major issues for them this year. So here, I guess this is a really hard question to answer, and and this is why we have you on here, because it, it feels like like if you're the head coach at Ohio State, you are judged against Michigan and in national championship situations. Like, that's it. You're mm -hmm. not really – you're not judged against Northwestern. You're not judged against Wisconsin. You're judged against Michigan and winning the national championship. And the, uh, they get to the national title with Ryan Day, of course. And the guy's only lost like twice, literally in conference. So it's not like the, yeah. I I think the conversation around Ryan Day is a little ahead of schedule here. But that being said, they weren't competitive against Alabama in 2020. They haven't been competitive in back-to-back -back games against Michigan. This is now a game in which, you know, tr conventional wisdom has Georgia winning. But I, I think it's going to be a much better game than people think. W I guess my question is where has Ryan day made the difference? Because you already alluded to, they mm -hmm. like spreading it out. They're comfortable in that situation. Georgia, Missouri did this to Georgia. Alabama did it to Georgia last year in the SEC title game. When you go down the field and you make them play in space, that's where Georgia gets a little bit, you know, you can take away all that strength in the front seven away from them to some degree. W what is it that Ryan day brings that is just Ryan day that makes, does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Like what, yeah. Like CJ Stroud's great, Harrison's great. We know all these pieces. What is it that Ryan Day is doing that makes the difference in a potential win for Ohio State against Georgia? 
Well, he like like bigger picture. He's he's revolutionized their passing attack in in, in a major way. Like, and, and everyone talks about how Ohio State like never had NFL quarterbacks, and, and I know maybe that jury's still out on some of the guys that Ryan Day has put into the league. But Ohio State all of a sudden went from having no draft success with quarterbacks whatsoever to speak of to now having like a there every guy that comes out of here is a first round pick and that's going to continue for ryan day so like he's he's drastically improved the passing from the quarterback position and then this passing offense in general he, he sort of brought that more into the modern era because ohio state um and urban meyer's passing game was not particularly sophisticated um but in the biggest games under ryan day that's not really translated um if yeah. you like were if you were to run run through all of his biggest games like starting in 2019 like they played pretty well in the semifinal against Clemson kind of shot themselves in the foot a little bit in that game um but I think you can make the argument that they played better for the entirety of the game that Clemson did they just lost um 2020 they they really put it on Clemson that that was Ryan Day's yeah. best coaching performance to date and that was fueled by the motivation of losing the year before feeling feeling like they had let something slip away and like he had been seething to get a shot at Brett Venables again and when he got it <laughs> he didn't he didn't miss um and that was that was the best game i think they've played under him to to date but then it just didn't carry over to that game against Alabama like you said the following year they lose to to Oregon they lose to Michigan um this year obviously they lose to Michigan again like they they beat Notre Dame and he, they get credit for that that's a big game but um he's he's lost more often than he's won in these major major games and um i don't i don't know why that is i th- i think over time i think there's a sense that maybe he's kind of lost the feel a little bit as a play caller or or i more think it's it's more along the lines of there's so much on a head coach's plate in college football now that it's hard to be the play caller yeah, and and that. dedicate dedicate the time that's necessary to make sure you have the right plan and you're seeing the right things on going on in the game it's why it's, people always kind of bring it up with Ryan Day is like i think the last head coach to win a national title as the primary offensive play caller was Jimbo Fisher um just as it doesn't happen very often so that seems to be going swimmingly in in texas yeah yeah i don't think that's a guy you want to be compared to at the moment <laughs> um, so, uh, there's a lot there, but, but I think that, that Ryan day, there's been a tangible impact on Ohio state's offense and, and the way that they operate and throw the football specifically. Um, but it's not shown up when they've kind of needed it the most. And like, it has to show up in this game that that is how you beat Georgia. If it does not show up against Georgia, then I don't think Ohio state has any shot at winning this game. I, I think that's, that's where I wanted to kind of take this is the other side of the ball, because for us to even have a conversation about this being a close game, you have to sort of assume that it's a wash when Ohio state's got the ball and Georgia's on defense, that it's evenly matched somehow through 60 minutes that they kind of both win matchups, mm-hmm. you know, on and off throughout the whole course of the game. The real, I, I think the real, if you assume that then it's a good game, but on the other side, you talked about CJ Stroud, not taking advantage of, of sort of the space. Well, Georgia has been incredibly creative. Stetson Bennett loves running the football. When the play breaks down, he's way more athletic than people think. They're going to run two, three tight end sets. They got multiple backs. Like they do a bunch of weird stuff. How, yep. how, how has this, because, and, and the Ohio State defense was the issue two years ago. It still was an issue against Michigan. They had receivers running wide open. The run fits were good for most of that game, but then it kind of broke down in the second half. Are we assuming the offense can score and can play evenly with Georgia's defense? Where are we concerned on Ohio State's defensive side of the ball against Georgia's offense? Uh, um mostly when like when it comes to big plays i think that that's sort of been the the mo for high state's defense this year they they've been pretty good against the run and i guess like the overall numbers against michigan probably don't reflect that but that was like two really long runs at the end of the game otherwise i thought they did a pretty good job of of keeping that rushing attack yeah. in check now now it all counts right you know they gave up those big runs that that counts against their their ledger as well um but i do think this is a pretty good run defense the 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 problem at times is they have to divert so many resources to make sure that they're a good running defense that they leave themselves vulnerable on the back end, which is where you saw Michigan hit a lot of those big pass plays uh, on November 26th when they beat Ohio State. And and Georgia certainly is capable of of doing that. I think I think most of Stetson Bennett's passing attempts come off of play action. So they probably welcome that. Um so that's what that's what scares me in this matchup a little bit for Ohio State is they they're their safety play has been pretty good at times, certainly bad at others. And the Michigan game is the best example of that. Their corner play has been very inconsistent. And there's just not um, really a long list of difference makers on the back end of the defense that I think you can trust to kind of hold up in one-on-one situations, especially when they're trying to contend with guys like Brock Bowers and, and Darnell Washington. Like they're just freaks. I don't I don't know how you do that. I don't think anybody can do that. <laughs> so it's it's a it's a kind of a pick your poison, I think, for for Jim Knowles. Like, does he 
Now, Georgia doesn't run the ball quite the same way as Michigan does, but but they are effective. But does he want to divert resources to that the same way he did against Michigan and leave his guys on islands? Or does he want to maybe play back a little bit and try to keep everything in front of them and hope they can tackle well enough to keep Georgia out of the end zone? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, but I think the fact that you, know, you have to choose one or the other and Georgia seems more than capable of beating you the opposite of whichever way you choose, I think spells yeah. problems for Ohio State's defense, which is why like, I thought really since this matchup came out that this is probably going to be a shootout with, with both teams approaching 40 points. Um, most of that, I think, is on Ohio State's offense and how they can perform because I don't really – doubt that Georgia's going to be able to perform against Ohio State's defense yeah it's it's it it <laughs> Georgia's good is what we're getting at yeah here. they're really good <laughs> yeah Georgia, yeah Georgia's really good um uh just real quickly I I think I'm, I'm you know I'm here in Nashville Mike Vrabel there's lots of talk about him in Ohio State I don't think he's getting fired anytime soon I think it's way early for Ryan Day to even have these conversations but like I already said when you're the head coach at Ohio State these are the games you are measured by this is your job at Ohio State is to win these games what happens if they get blown out and and it's 41-17 and you know we're we're going into another season where that's basically four consecutive championship situations where they they have quote unquote failed to live up to Ohio State expectations what any what what happens in the off season with Ohio State uh i think it gets pretty uncomfortable uh, um i don't think anything drastic would happen right ryan day just signed a contract extension last year um, Gene Smith, the athletic director, I think thinks very highly of, of Ryan Day. Um, they just brought in Jim Knowles as defensive coordinator last year. Like they're gonna they're gonna give him time to kind of build that, even if it looks ugly again against Georgia. Um, there'll be hard questions probably about like play calling and staff structure and all that stuff, but um, I don't think any of that leads to to Ohio State making any kind of change with Ryan Day. Now, does that change the tenor of next year when they they play Notre Dame again and they and they they have to beat Michigan next year, mm-hmm. probably? But the the thing that makes it difficult, because as you mentioned, like you're expected to beat Michigan as, when you're the Ohio State head coach, but we're are we are quickly approaching an era in college football where the result of that game will not factor. It, it didn't even factor into this year. They can still play for yeah. a national title yeah. even though they lost to Michigan. So like, how much does that game end up factoring into those kind of decisions in a world where there's an expanded playoff and you're probably going to get in there anyway. I don't, I don't know the answer to what, that, but what, what happens, what happens if they beat Georgia and lose to Michigan in the national championship game? Yeah. I've, <laughs> I've tried, I've tried not to think of that because I, I, you know, I, I like to take care of my own mental health and I can't imagine what the Ohio <laughs> state fan base will be like uh, as we try to talk, talk them through uh, that, that scenario. So wow. uh, we'll, we'll see what happens, but uh, I'm not, I, I think Ryan day at some point would like to coach in the NFL um maybe all the change in college football makes that urge even greater but um kind of regardless of what happens here over the next couple weeks um I I don't envision Ohio State you know even entertaining the idea of making a change of head coach yeah I I agree with you but man the first outright Big Ten national championship not named Ohio State since like the 60s that'd be a a big that'd be a big one uh thank you so much man for hanging out with us we really do appreciate it Bill take a good have a good one enjoy the weekend and and we'll, we'll talk soon thank you man sounds good thank you